welcome back, welcome back, welcome back for another episode. Now, the question of this video is, oh, by the way, pause before we proceed. I know I've got a do rag on, but you know, when you have waves in your hair, it is it becomes a lifestyle. It becomes it's not a, just a just a choice or just something you do for fashion. It becomes a lifestyle. You have to brush your hair for ten minutes, and then you have to you have to wear your do rag. Just, just what, what you have to do. Me, okay, fine. Let me not lie. I don't brush my hair for ten minutes because that is very very long. I ain't got that kind of patience or time. Um, so me, I do a quick two 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 brush in the shower when I come out of the shower. Do another brush real quick, real quick, and then wrap the do rag. You know, and then you know, keep it tight and you know, secured so that you know, you know, when you are like I said, oh, anyway, sure. let's carry on now. Will my diaspora accent see? I didn't even know what to call this video. If I should call it will my English accent, will my American accent, will my Chinese accent, will my Indian accent? I didn't know what to call this video, so yeah, will my diaspora accent hinder me? In Nigeria now the honest answer is yes yes it will now just a disclaimer everything I'm saying it is just a complete representation of my own personal views I'm just sharing my own opinion based on my own experience as I do yeah so like I said in my opinion I do believe that having a diaspora accent can hinder you in Nigeria when you're doing business because I'm, I'm just being real you're a foreigner you've come to Nigeria you know automatically some Nigerians might assume that you're not very clued up in terms of the prices of things and the process of things so they're just gonna be like okay cool you don't you're not clued up you don't know what the real deal is so we're just gonna give you any price that we want to give you because as soon as they hear that English accent oh they know they're like oh okay cool let's say you want to buy a plot of land right and in actuality the plot of land costs 300,000 naira Right? When they hear your accent, yeah, and it's, and they're dealing with that with you with the accent directly, they might say it's four hundred thousand naira or even six hundred thousand naira, just because they can. I'm just being real. I'm just telling you guys the truth. That is the point of this. That's the purpose of this channel to cater for my diaspora and my Nigerians. Right now, Nigerians, do you guys live in Nigeria? So you're good. These are for my diasporas that are wanting to come over and do business. It's true. They'll add price to it. It should be three hundred thousand. They've now called it six hundred thousand because you sounded like like you had an English accent, or you sounded like you American, or you sounded Chinese. That's just that's just how it is, you know. So, yes, having an accent does hinder you, in my opinion. Now there are ways around this. Like I always say in my videos, there are ways for me. But for every problem in this life, there is a solution. Yeah. Now, if you want to sort of go around this, you know, always haggle, 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 always haggle. Yeah, obviously when you're dealing with corporations like actual established businesses, it's harder to haggle. But if you're dealing on a one-to-one -one, person to person basis, yeah, haggle. If they tell if you're gonna go and buy land from a family and the family tells you that the land costs 1.2 million, tell them you wanna pay 900,000. Tell them you wanna pay 800,000 and then you now negotiate and find a middle ground. So let's say they said 1.2, you said 8,000. Let's say somewhere you meet in the middle at 1 million naira. Okay, cool, happy days. Let's say you're even lucky, they might even say, okay, cool, give us 900,000, happy days. Yeah, that's how you negotiate. That's what you have to do. You never, ever, ever give the price that they say. Even if they say 1.2, you could even you could even be cheeky and say, oh, all well, I've got is 500,000. Throw them off, throw them off, baffle their mind. 500,000, take it or leave it. Or what's the best you can offer me? They might say, oh, okay, we said 1.2, you said 500,000, but that's a bit too low. Can you, like, you know, give us... And you could say, look, the most I could do at a push is 600. 600 is the most I can do at a push. And then just be like, look, you guys think think about it. Leave it with them. This isn't even just for uh, this isn't even just for, for Nigeria and land. This is actually for business in general, how, how you negotiate, right? You leave it in there. When you said your last price, say, leave it in their court. Say, okay, cool. I'm going to leave it with you guys. You think about it. If you have an offer for me, let me know. Simple. You leave it with them. And then they'll come back to you and say, okay, cool. You know, yeah, we said 1.2. You said 650. Can you do 750? And then you'll be like, hmm. You have to play hard to get though. Don't just be like, okay, yeah, I can do 750. No, no, no. Now you're like, oh, okay, let me think about it, let me think about it. Mm, but you could even take out your phone, pretend like you're checking some calculations and some maths, you know. <laughs> like I said, I'm giving you guys inside scoop. Giving you inside scoop of business right here. Yeah, you think about it, you think about it. Okay, cool. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, I guess that's that's fair. 750, handshake, business done. So when you have an accent, 
the best way to go around things is to make sure you price and make sure that you negotiate. You have to, you have to negotiate. Now, like I said, when you're dealing with companies, you know, like you know, established uh, retail companies that focus on business and property, um, it's harder to do that because the prices are set. You know, because we can't. So, for example, like let's say you guys came to our company now with professional estates, and you're like, okay, cool. You know, Toby, this land that we saw on your website uh, cost nine hundred thousand, but all I can afford is five hundred. I'm just being real. I will tell you that if you can't afford the nine hundred thousand, okay, keep it stepping. Find another business that you can that can uh, accommodate the price, or look for something cheaper that is within your price range on our website. If you can't afford what we're asking for, you gotta keep it stepping because if we change the price for you. As a whole company, we're gonna to have to do it for the next person, and then the next person, and then the next person. And then if those two people now meet each other, and the same land or the same plots that are side by side, one paid five hundred thousand for it, as an example, and another one paid one million because we were trying to be friendly and nice, it will be it, it will leave a bad taste and, and ruin the reputation of that business. So when you're dealing with businesses, I would say it's actually harder to negotiate. I would say probably just avoid negotiating with big businesses, you know, huge corporations. Just avoid the, nego the negotiation part. Unless you can find the manager good directly, but even still, just avoid that. But if you're dealing with private sellers, individuals, by all means, by all means, please don't be afraid to bargain. Don't be afraid to negotiate. When you're dealing with big businesses, they're not going to try to rip you off because the same price that they're telling you is what they're telling everybody. That's if the business is legit and they're reputable. They will be very transparent with everything that they say and do. If they have a 50% promo for for two days, that doesn't just apply to you. It applies to every single person that wants to, you know, buy from that company. You know, some a lot of companies do it. We do it too. We have promos where we can say, okay, for Valentine's Day, ten percent off of all of our land. You know, it's not just for one person; it's for everybody. You know, so when you do have an accent, I don't think it really matters when you're dealing with big businesses, but when you're dealing with more private sellers, <clears throat> it definitely matters. If you can, if you're gonna buy from a private seller house or land, if you can go with somebody who is, you know, uh, who speaks like Yoruba, Igbo, uh, any any Nigerian language, you know, that can be the one to sort of negotiate on your behalf, then I think that would be actually better because then they know that, okay, you guys are speaking the same language, like, you know, like they can't try to cheat, cheat that person because they know that they're clued up. Whereas if it's just you, they'll just see you as, huh, you can take advantage of this one easily. You get I'm not saying that every single person is like this. Not every single seller is like this in Nigeria, you know. There are some cases where by let's say like you may not even know the price at all. And some people are just very kind hearted and you might think you have to pay a lot more than what you actually should should have should be paying. And then they'll they'll be like, actually no, you don't need to pay that much, like, you know, and then they'll tell you the actual price which would be less than what you were gonna pay. You know, there are some very genuinely genuine hearted people, but unfortunately you do get the you know, get people who try to take advantage of the fact that you're a foreigner and you know you obviously don't live in Nigeria, you have a slight accent too, and they'll want to make money from you in any way that they can. So just be careful. Even me, to a certain extent, even me that I speak Yoruba, when I go to Nigeria, yeah, my Yoruba sounds like, one time they, I, I went to some market in Nigeria, they said that my Yoruba sounds like an Igbo man speaking Yoruba. I was like, wow, you're very rude and you have no manners. But it's cool, I healed. You know, and sometimes even me, like sometimes even me, they try to like add prices. I'm like, don't try to add prices. Like, I know how much this costs. And that's how much you're gonna get. In fact, you're even gonna get less now because you were being cheeky, try to add a price to it. Cause you know, you, you want my business. But now you want to add price, you see? So it happens to me as well. Like even if your brother does not sound like super, super, super authentic, some people can try to take advantage and try to, you know, uh, yeah, just be, be, be cheeky. You know? So yeah, you just have to be careful and don't be afraid to negotiate.